little bit about family history. And uh, Daddy, would you go ahead and start it off? And we'll, if we think of questions, we'll probably ask you as we go along. Okay. Uh, in 1913, uh, if I remember correctly, it was the sixth day of March, 1913. My dad and and uh, the family, which are composed of my two sisters and myself, uh, left. Uh, Newton, Illinois, on train with uh, the little uh, belongings we had, and uh, headed for Beside Hill, Alberta. And we were going to make our home up there, and then uh, shortly after we got there, we uh, homesteaded, filed on a 160 acre homestead, and we built a house that following fall. And lived there most of our, the time we were up there. <coughs> and during that time, uh, which was was 11 years that we lived in Canada after we left here, uh, during that time my two sisters uh, married and uh, and moved to the, into the uh, Portland, Oregon area, or possibly part of the time in Washington, and. Uh, Cleo had, uh, she had, I guess, all four of her children before she left Canada. And uh, Vivian had the one child by her first husband. And uh, they were divorced, and she married again and had another child by him, another boy by him, or a boy by him, rather, because the first was a girl. And <coughs> we moved, uh, I, I mentioned that we went into Bassano. And we moved out to Hudson, that's where, where we uh, homesteaded, and dad homesteaded, and we built there. And uh, uh, during that time, I guess we just, uh, just grew up about like everybody else does, but uh, didn't know very much and didn't have very much, and, and it seemed like the, the uh, drought hit that area, and we, we weren't doing very good, but we did have had some cattle and, and uh, plenty of horses to, to farm, pretty good farming operation. And uh, we moved over into the Duchess area, about 25 miles, if I remember correctly, from where we had formerly lived. And the reason we wanted to get the benefit of uh, the uh, irrigation project that was over there. And we, uh, we leased 320 acres of land over there, and we had uh, and they had a, a section fenced in, so we had a hundred. We had 320 acres of uh, pasture land along with the farmland we had, and uh, <coughs> uh, we uh, we we uh, didn't benefit as much from uh, from uh, the irrigated area as we expected to, since the ground wasn't uh, conducive to raising growing crops uh, sufficient to keep you going and pay your expenses. And uh, the soil was the soil was sandy in the area that we moved into because uh, the better land had already been bought. I might mention how this uh, area was made up. It was given to the CPR Railway, and they called the CPR DNR, which meant Department of Natural Resources area, uh, part of their uh, organization. And they gave them uh, land clear across the uh, uh, Dominion of Canada to build a transcontinental railroad from uh, from one coast to the other. And uh, so they saw a prospect there of irrigating, and they put a dam on the Bow River and run the water up, which, which irrigated that quite a quite an area in there. Was that just with uh, irrigation ditches, or how did they yes, take it, the ditches to make the? They uh, they was all done with horses and and uh, strip scrapers and so on, whatever they needed, and and the uh, uh, then they. They had uh, carpenters that went in and built the stops and one thing or another in what it took them and, and uh, to to get the 
this, uh, you had, had to keep this water at a certain level. It didn't, it wouldn't have, didn't, wouldn't be able to irrigate any amount of ground. <clears throat> so we, uh, we decided we, since the girls have both moved back to uh, the United States, that we'd come back to. In fact, I guess we were a little homesick after they left for no budget to, uh, uh, we didn't have a real close friends, and yet we did. I chased around with the girls some, and down with the older women. Yes, uh, we, Mother just mentioned the fact that uh, I had told her that we had uh, lost our, the first house we built by a fire, burned everything we had. I, uh, I happened, uh, I had, uh, we had the clothes we had on, that's what I had, and I had a, a sheepskin coat that I always carried when we went to school, and uh, I, I drove a um, buckboard, I guess it was, and hauled the kids from that district to another district about six miles away from there, and uh, got some pay for that. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have gone to school as much as I did. Was this before you moved to the irrigated land yes, and you were burned was. out? Yeah, I should have back, uh, uh, mentioned that as we went along, but I didn't do that. So I uh, I guess I went to three different, or maybe just maybe just two different schools. And uh, before I, then they, then they built a school in the area where, uh, where we lived. And but I had gotten through school by that time or, or quit anyhow. When did you? Uh, what? How? How many years did you go to school up there? Well, I was uh, I was eight years old when I left here. I expect about about six years, five five or six years. <clears throat> I didn't complete the 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 eighth grade up there. And their their qualifications were somewhat higher than they are down here, and took in uh, in the eighth grade uh, took in several more subjects. We had uh, one thing about that part of the country we uh, we did a lot of studying uh, history. I took three, I uh, took two kinds of history in school. Then uh, when we went up, I took a history from the United States up there, so I could uh, work one against another. I got a pretty broad view of things, especially since the uh, um, United States had withdrawn from England and we were really controlled Canada. And uh, so we decided we'd leave, uh, we'd leave up there and, and things had got so bad that you couldn't hardly sell any uh, livestock or anything. But we got rid of our, our what cattle we had, part of them we had put on the market and part of them were sold to other people. But uh, we left there with uh, two, two wagons and, and uh, they was filled mostly with uh, horse feed uh, oats and, uh, and then uh, uh, our, um, bound oats wasn't, oh, like wasn't fresh. Like bundles? Or? Yeah. How many horses did you have? Ten. Ten horses? Uh -huh. How long did you we, travel each day? Well, I expect we went 20 miles probably a day, 20, maybe 25 or 30. We, um, we moved right along. We just stopped a little while to uh, move on until it till about dark. Didn't and we'd camp along the way. Any place there happened to be a place, we'd have to, we'd have to pick out some place where there's water. That's uh, the problem we had. Didn't you sleep under the wagon? Yeah, we slept under the wagon. You didn't stop at any bill, any motels. Motels. It was no. just sleeping along on the. <laughs> it was ground. one long picnic. That's right. Oh. We we had a big bed roll. And we just unrolled that bed. And Sleep under and it. Crawl in. Were there any any dangers in traveling like that? Oh, it would be minor. Right. I would say uh, it wouldn't be near as dangerous as it would be now to be traveling in this part. Of because if somebody thought you had a little money in here, they'd knock you off just to get it. But uh, the people in general up there, there was while there was a lot of people who wasn't any good, but there were people in general who were honest, I'd say. What about animals or? Animals? Animals or? To harm you. Were there Indians or anything mm, like that? There? 
was Indian, but they were on reservations like they are here in this yeah. country. And uh, they would occasionally, about every summer, they'd, uh, uh, they'd uh, have about 25 or 30 wagons, and they'd go through the Indian tribe would to go and visit in some other tri uh, reservation, and mm -hmm. they'd make it back. And uh, we'd always have a time there at the store. They'd, they'd steal everything they'd get their hands mm -hmm. on. And uh, somebody would be happily watching them all the time. <laughs> I remember our uh, merchant there, oh, he was, he was, he was kind of easy shook up, and he would get pretty shook up about <clears throat> But we went to our, uh, where we were heading actually was, we had heard there was a big work project in uh, Oregon. Oh, uh, I think it was Oregon. And uh, that was where we were really headed for, so we started down there. And, and uh, we got to a place uh, in Montana, and they, uh, uh, there was, they had a building. They were going to build a grade over a railroad, an overhead bridge over a railroad. And they had to haul all of that gravel about 20 miles. So we just got us some uh, lumber, made us each one gravel bed, Set, set our wagon beds off and gravel bed, and we uh, hauled, uh, we could only haul one load a day, but I think it was making about seven or eight dollars a day, which was good. pretty good money back then. Yeah. And, uh, and, oh, I would say probably ten days before the, uh, the gravel was deposited that should have made the grade, and uh, the uh, whatever uh, cement was used there, they, they shut it down, and uh, we went back through that area, and, and uh, I don't remember that that, that uh, was ever built there. Mm -hmm. But uh, <coughs> we, I meant we went back through in later years since we were just traveling by car. And uh, so uh, we decided we would go across the mountains into uh, western Montana and log, log in the uh, winter which we did, and that was just a break-even deal. We uh, it cost us enough to buy our feed and, and uh, live as that uh, we were making. And uh, then the next, uh, I would say it was in May probably, uh, they they shut down what uh, the uh, Great, Great Northern Railway was the one that buy, bought the uh, most of the timber that came out of there ended up on the ties where they mm -hmm. keep the railroads up. And uh, <clears throat> they shut down buying ties. Well, that just made everything flop completely. So uh, we had no prospect of anything. And uh, one, I don't know who suggested it. Probably I did because uh, I knew Dad always, always was wanting to get back here. And I said, well, what do you say we just we just go down, uh, we knew that, heard of a place about 20 miles from there, 25 miles, I believe it was Columbia Falls, Montana, and they had a, every Saturday they had a, a community sale. So we went in there and when uh, we didn't get there till oh, probably 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. And he said, boy, I wish I'd known this, I'd make some, done some advertising on this, that we'd got some good horses there. He said, and I had called down and, owned, and assigned them to the sale before before we started down. And he said, uh, if we'd got some uh, advertising on this, we'd get more money from the horses. So we sold out there, and as a result of that, we had uh, we had enough money to buy our ticket back here and money to live on what we paid it maybe a little after we got back here. Hey, before we were here. Coffee, drink your coffee there while you're uh, where was here, back to uh, Illinois? Newton, that's where Newton, we entered. That's, that's where we bought to. our um, uh, ticket to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't you also uh, go by way, is that the time you went on out to uh, Oregon yeah, first? We, we went by uh, the way of uh, Portland, Oregon. And, uh, well, Cleo, Cleo was living, Fred and her were living together then, and he was working for Carpenter Trade, and he'd be gone a week at a time. It just happened, we happened, happened in when he wasn't there, and we stayed about a couple of days with her, and then we went on to Portland, and Betty lived there. And uh, we we were together one day uh, there, and then we took the train that uh, that evening and headed for, uh, 
we were, it was kind of strange, you, it, it don't seem reasonable, but we were seven days and, and a night or seven nights and a day, I think seven nights and a day, I believe, getting back here. Oh, my life. And, and we, we had two 12-hour 12, 12 layovers. One was in Sacramento, California, and the other was in Ogden, Utah. Wow. So you went from you went from Oregon down to Sacramento? It took us, that was the route. That was the cheapest route. It was the longest route, but it's it was the cheapest. cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you didn't have uh, Pullman or anything? You slept in the chairs? Slept in the seats we could lay them back, you know. And yes. they wasn't. Trains weren't usually uh, crowded too much. So uh, a week later, a week and a day or a week and a night mm -hmm. later, we got off the train at, uh, uh, just about just past daylight in San Luis. What uh, year was that? What year was that, Basil? 1924. Now that the trains then though they had a lot better road beds and stuff than they had now. Oh, and uh, we we would uh, could make we'd eat some on the train. They had a they had a dining car, on them. and uh, we would eat some on that. And then every time it was a uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, well, milk pickup uh, job. It was. Oh. Uh,